Hey, I'm Seth with Land House. I installed a micro hydro turbine from Langston Alternative Power, and it has been running for well over a month flawlessly. Here's the turbine, you can see it's uh, spinning nicely. It is generating approximately 200 watts all the time, very consistently. But I'm just using one jet out of four potential here. So my creek is flowing over 40 gallons a minute. So I should be able to pull uh, more than I'm using right now. What I'm thinking about doing is replacing one of my uh, quarter inch jets around here with a 3 16 So I should be able to turn on a second nozzle and have more wattage. So I'm actually thinking I can get somewhere closer to 250 watts instead of 200. So today we're going to be doing that. I'm also going to be replacing this metal box right here with a, uh, a PVC version. So it will connect up past the wire here and go straight in and uh, be uh, plastic so it won't have that metal box hanging out there. So let's go ahead and turn this off and get to work replacing one of these jets. I figured this was a good time to replace this box because I have the wires off for getting to the uh, turbine nozzles. Let's go ahead and just pull these off of here. Coming straight through the plywood into the box would also give me more wire to work with. I don't have much as it is here. My 250 feet of 10-3 ran out right here, which was really convenient, but it did not give me much room to work with. So having the turbine wires come straight into the box instead of off to the side, I think will be beneficial. To get the turbine out of here, I've got some butterfly nuts. I just unscrew real quick. I guess some people call them wing nuts. I just have this piece of treated lumber to kind of yeah, hold the turbine down in place. I'm hoping that once I replace this nozzle, I won't be accessing this much more. Because it's just enough of a hassle to have to pull everything out here. And the problem is, my union doesn't fit through the box. So once I get that free, I have to step inside here and then unscrew this connection down here. That's free, and now I should be able to pull the turbine out. Oh, I've been really pleased with this turbine from Spencer. It has worked remarkably well. So my plan is to just remove, uh, I guess, two of these and replace them with the, uh, the 3 16 So this is my quarter inch that comes in right here and it's doing really well. I'm going to pull this one out and replace it with the 3 16 So you can see here, the uh, this nozzle here that Spencer provided has been drilled out. And so it's a quarter inch versus the 3 16 that I'm replacing. Uh, this should hopefully use somewhere around uh, eight gallons a minute versus the 12 for this one. All right, so I don't think that this box is going to fit very well into this hole here. So I may have to drill another hole to make it fit a little bit better. 
I wonder if it would be easier on me to get these wires into the box and just leave them in there. I don't know if there would be any issue with uh, uh, moisture build up that way or not. Probably not, so I can just come with these wires into the box and then wire them up in here. I don't know, let's give it a try. All right, the wires are now through that opening. Let's see if I can get them into here and hopefully bring them to their final home. Okay, cool. I like that pretty good. And now I can have a little bit extra space here with my other wires, whereas before it was really tight. So let's just hope there's not any issue with water buildup in here and causing issues. But anyway, let me go ahead and get these wired up. Turbine is back in the box and I have the wire here. We'll see if that's going to be an issue or not. Uh, I did tape it up so maybe it won't have any moisture problems there. And it all It's all separated so we'll see. Okay, so now we have that second jet. The 3 16th is right there. Let's go ahead and turn this on and let it run like it normally does with a single jet. So that right there should allow us to run at about 200 watts. Let's go ahead and open this up and see what we're getting with the second nozzle. Hopefully we'll see it uh, spin up faster. Didn't see much change. Let's see if there's much of a difference here in the uh, dynamic pressure. A little bit, maybe like two PSI, which you can't see. Yeah, so it's a little bit less. Let's go to the house and see if we're getting more watts. Just stepped under the house and we are getting 290 to 309 uh, watts out of this unit now. Let me zoom in so you can see it a bit better. So 295, 296, I saw a 310 earlier. Man, 100 watts is huge. So now we have to take a trip up to the intake and see if we still have overflow or if we're using too much water. Just made it up here to the end of the four-wheeler trail. I've got a four and a half gallon bucket. We're gonna go up here and see what the overflow is. Now it has rained a lot in the past two days. So I would like to see anywhere between five and 10 gallons a minute overflow. Uh, so in the winter time, I should be able to run a couple more jets I'll have to see what I can do because Spencer did not put a fourth ball valve into the turbine, which means I uh, will have to run two jets at once. So maybe I could hook up another 3 16 in there and run one quarter inch and then three 3 16 um, to get us up to about 400 watts. But anyway, let's head up here to the uh, intake. There's a happy sight. We still have quite the overflow, even with that other jet on, making 300 watts. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the stopwatch here and get the uh, four and a half gallons filled and we'll see how much time it takes. All right, here we go. All right, four and a half gallons in 25 seconds. So the math on that is uh, 60 times 4.5 gallons divided by 25 seconds is 10.8 gallons per minute. So that's our current overflow is 10.8 gallons. Nice, so we should be able to maintain that. Before I was getting uh, 30 gallons a minute into the tank, so we are using somewhere around 20 gallons right now at the bottom. The difference between 300 watts and 200 watts is basically uh, 4.8 kilowatt hours in a day or 7.2 kilowatt hours adding that extra 100 watts, which comes into play for the cost by the end of the year. 
Uh, instead of $280 payback on 200 watts, it's $420 payback in a year on 300 watts. So if I can continue to use 300 watts all the time, I'll be making $420 off of the hydro system for the uh, power usage. Now in the winter time, I really anticipate that I can add another 3 16 jet and be making closer to 400 watts. Um, so that's gonna be really awesome. And that's gonna push us well up there to 550 or $600 in a year. But uh, anyway, super exciting. And I'm glad that we have this much overflow still. I may be able to use one more 3 16 jet now. We'll just have to uh, play around with it and see what we can get. Thank you so much for watching. If you've got some comments, write those down below. Be sure to subscribe for micro hydro content and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Just got back down here to the house and I've seen a 324 as the highest. Up oh, 330. <laughs> Just keeps going up. So that uh, charge controller will continue to move the voltage around until it finds the, uh, the optimal there. But if you look at what's being consumed here on the inverter, 220 at the moment. So uh, at 300 and something, that three, or that 220 will uh, continue to charge the batteries. Like when I left earlier, it was at uh, 61 point something, and now it's at 62. So these batteries are still charging, even though the house is using that much power. Hey, sneak peek, solar is coming soon.